Hey, what's up YouTube? My name is John Bromet, and we're gonna be talking about actions in Adobe Illustrator. If you use Adobe Illustrator fairly often and you're not using actions every single time you're using the program, then you're wasting time. It's really easy to set up a custom action that does something that you do all the time over and over and over, and it makes it way easier for you, so it'll save you a couple steps. Sometimes an action is as easy as just saving you one click, so you're making one click instead of two or something like that. It saves you taking your hand off the keyboard and moving around on the trackpad. Or sometimes they can do things like save a bunch of different logo files and a bunch of different file types so that you can output a logo for a client in one second flat. Well, a little longer because you have to wait for the program to do it, but you don't have to do anything. You can just sit back and watch and it takes a couple seconds. So actions can be super useful, whether you're a professional graphic designer or just an amateur or you're just playing around in Illustrator or you're an illustrator or whatever it is you're doing, actions can be really useful because you can customize them to exactly what you need. So let's just jump into Illustrator. I've got Adobe Illustrator open right now and I have a bunch of actions that are pre-set up. It comes with default actions as you can see right here, but I've set up my own actions as well. So I'm not going to go over every single one of them, but I am going to just show you one or two just to make it easier. So when I'm talking about saving a click and saving just one second, sometimes that can be as easy as setting something to align to a page. So it doesn't matter what page size your document is, but let's just say that I have my logo that I'm just going to drag in here. And normally what I'd have to do is align to artboard and then I'm going to have to click the center alignment this way and the center alignment that way. And that's a couple clicks and it's me grabbing, taking my hand off the keyboard, moving it to the trackpad. You know, it's not a big deal, but it's a couple seconds. But now if I want to, just by clicking F1 while this is selected, it'll automatically just pop it into the center. And that's because I've set it up in action. It's a really easy action to set up. So I'll show you how exactly I did it. We'll just go over here to the actions panel. And under default actions, you can of course make your own folder. Here I'll make a folder that just says tests, hit enter. And now all you want to do is basically record yourself making some actions. So you want to make a new action in that folder and we're going to call this center. So this is the key. You want to be able to set this to a function key. And I'm going to go with F1 in this case, because this is something I'm going to use all the time. And you can choose whether you also have shift or command selected to, in order to make this effect work. But I like to try and make it as easy as possible. So most of the time I don't use any of those and you can give it a color. It'll just show up differently in the actions thing. So with that done, you just click record and now you select your item and you're going to go to, so now it's recording you in the background. So you're going to make sure that's set to that. And then you're going to go center and you're going to go center. Now it may look like you haven't done anything, but if we check, in our actions panel, you'll see that it recorded those two movements. Now by simply clicking stop, that's it. Our action now works perfectly. So let's just move this over here. I'm going to open this action panel and I'm just going to click center and hit play. Boom. It, just like that, it's centered really fast and it's set to my F1 key. So anytime I press F1, it just pops into the center really quickly. So that's one example of how you can save, you know, I know it's not going to save you. It's not going to change your life. But that's a little useful thing that I use every day and I probably use it, I don't know, maybe a hundred times a day. I use it so often. So here's another example of something that's a little bit cooler. Let's say that I have my logo here and that I actually want to make it into a sticker. So I'll just blow it up a little bit. And let's say that I need to add a cut line and I want it to be set up an eighth of an inch off of the edge of the design. Now doing this can take a little while, but by selecting it, and if I go over here into my actions, I do already have this set as an F key but I'm just going to select cut line with 0 0.125 offset. And if I click play, Illustrator does all the work for me and you can see now that I have a cut line that is perfectly set up and it's just an eighth of an inch off of my artboard. Just selecting just that cut line alone, you can see right here, it's set up to a 100% magenta. And depending on the printer you send it up to, they may want a different color, but just like that, that is set up. And if I didn't have that set up, what I would have to do is go like this. Let me show you. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make our cut line. So in order to do that, we're going to go over here to the actions panel and we're going to hit new and we'll call it cut line 0 0.125 inches. And I'm going to set that to function key F2 and I am going to use shift and command, but only so I don't record over other actions that I already have. So if we just hit record, you can see it is recording over here in the actions panel. And I'm just going to go to object and go down to path and then offset path. And we're going to set that to 0 0.125 inches. You can leave it with a round joint and a miter limit of four. You can just preview it there and we'll just go ahead and click OK. Now what I want to do is just make this one color. So we'll just make it pink for the sake of it. And I want to put it on top. So we're going to just use a command key that brings it up to the front. 
but you could just go to object, arrange, bring to font. Now you can see by me showing you that, I actually added it twice, but I can show you how to delete that after, that's no big deal. So with our Pathfinder panel, I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna click Merge and then Unite. And now we have it set up and all I need to do is hit Shift X, which switches my fill to my stroke. And we're gonna go to 0 0.5. And generally speaking, magenta at 100% is a good color to have for your dye line. But if you're working with a specific printer, they should be able to provide you with an exact color. So sometimes I'm gonna get something like this, which I already have pre-set up, which is a cut contour, which works with a certain type of printer and so on but just ask the person to send you that. So we recorded a few things we didn't need, so we're just gonna hit stop, and I don't need that last swatch thing where I showed you that cut contour, so I'm gonna delete that. So where I set the bring to front twice, that's just unnecessary, it would still work, but we'll go ahead and delete that one step by selecting it and hitting delete. Now this cut line should work just for us, so let's delete it, and just selecting our artwork, I'm gonna hit Command, Shift, F2, and as you can see, it perfectly sets up a cut line for me. And that's it. So hopefully you found that interesting. If you did, please like below and subscribe to make sure that you see the next videos that I put out. And if you found it really interesting, share it with some friends that you think might think it's cool. This is a young channel, so helping it grow will just give me more motivation to make more videos for you. If you wanna learn more about actions, I've actually taught a Skillshare class on it before, which I will link the trailer on YouTube right here. And if it's interesting to you, you can just hit the link in the description. I'll put it in the description of this video as well. So Skillshare.com is an awesome platform. I think it's around $10 a month. They usually have a deal going on where you can get the first two months for 99 cents. So you can watch all of my classes. I have 28 or so right now and a ton of other teachers that have amazing classes too. But even if that's not for you, just subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'll be putting out more content soon. All right, guys, we'll see you later.